Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the base Rolando Williamson. Rolando Williamson. Rolando Williamson. Williamson, also known as Baldhead, was convicted of leading a multi-million dollar criminal enterprise. Planes, trains, and automobiles are all part of Alabama's drug pipeline. The long arm of the drug cartel is reaching into the state from several directions. WAFF 48's Haley Baker investigates drug trafficking trends and reveals new information about the supply lines that connect drug cartel operations to our community. Our number one drug problem across Alabama it continues to be methamphetamine. Assistant Special Agent in Charge Clay Morris works with the Drug Enforcement Administration. Spending 24 years in law enforcement, he continues to fight the ever-changing war on drugs. Now we have transitioned from years ago to where people were making their own meth clandestine laboratories. Now our methamphetamine is, it comes from Mexico to be quite honest. Um, our, our, <clears throat> our methamphetamine in Alabama is supplied in the majority by the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico. Agent Mora says Interstate 20 is the major thoroughfare for drug traffickers into the state. Our proximity to Atlanta really causes us problems with the amount of methamphetamine that is available to our citizens in Alabama. Um, Atlanta is a major distribution hub in the United States for drugs because of its proximity. And we are literally I know, an hour and a half from, from Georgia yeah. here in Huntsville. That is a significant problem. Lieutenant Michael McCoy with the State Bureau of Investigations has also seen a dramatic change in the cost of meth or ice, which is the purest and most potent version of meth. Um, ice is such so cheap and so easy to get around here. If they can get it into a, a border area and then they can ship it through like U, UPS, FedEx or any of the above and ship it across the country, it saves money of having to use a runner. And get this, the cost also dramatically decreasing. One ounce of meth a few years ago costing $1,200 now costs only three to $400. Methamphetamine in our area is heavily concentrated in DeKalb, Marshall County area. That is where we're seeing the cheapest amount of methamphetamines in our area. Not saying it's not in Huntsville because we've made plenty of big busts in Madison County at the same price, yeah. plenty of busts in Decatur, Morgan County at the same price, but uh, there is a strong um, presence of it up on the cab Marshall County area. Agent Morris says this problem is so much bigger than just a drug problem. Well, when, when we when we solve the disease of addiction, then we'll be successful on the drug war also. They go hand in hand. So how are they combating this growing drug problem? Well, the DEA is expanding their office in Huntsville and adding more than a dozen new agents to help fight the war on drugs. Seven of those new agents are coming from the Madison County Sheriff's Office. They will deputize them with the same authority as DEA agents. Aaliyah, meanwhile, is in their second year of having the Regional Drug Task Force. The 17 agents work across North Alabama and they are adding two more agents this year. Now, both agencies continue to institute new training for officers to stay on top of new trends, hoping to get new information about the supply lines that connects overseas operations to you all. Follow up to a story you may remember from 2019, Rolando Williamson and those connected with him were all convicted today. Williamson, also known as Baldhead, was convicted of leading a multi-million dollar criminal enterprise. He and Adrian Taylor, Ishmael, uh, Gregory and Hendarius Archie, all convicted of conspiring to distribute various illegal substances, including meth, cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl. These convictions were the res result of a three-year investigation by the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. Imagine moving so many bricks for the cartel that they invite you to the town to ride motorcycles with them just to lock in the relationship. Nah, for real. 
And then just imagine one of your associates being like, nah, don't do that, man. They're going to take you off. Only to snitch on you. Boy, this shit wicked. Hug your mama and watch your back. It's your boy Popalot. We back on my business. We on our way to Alabama with it. Bessemer to be exact. But we going to serve the whole west side of Birmingham. We need everybody from Bessemer, everybody from Birmingham. Matter of fact, the whole Alabama. Y'all get in the comment box. We been down here lately. Now today, I'm going to do my best to tell you guys the story of Rolando Antoine Williams. And never mind the cornrows. We just going to go by Ballhead. Now, Ballhead, who grew up in Bessemer, which is a suburb southwest of Birmingham with less than 40,000 residents. But he would rise from his small town beginnings to run one of the most lucrative drug trafficking organizations that Alabama has ever seen. But before transitioning to boss, he would start out as a worker for one of the most flashiest hustlers to come out of Birmingham. And that's going to be a guy by the name of Billy Champ Williams Jr. Now, Champ Williams was a major supplier on the west side of Birmingham and or around 2010. According to Greg Galga, a retired FBI agent who worked the co-lead on Champs Williams' case, said that he was also suspected for several violent crimes, including homicides. Now, Champ Williams and 10 members of his organization would eventually be taken down when they would find themselves on the radar of the FBI Safe Streets Task Force, where after a series of coordinated raids, they would hit his stash house and a downtown luxury condo that he had where investigators would find around $167,000 in cash, another $175,000 in jewelry, as well as a fleet of upscale cars that included a Corvette ZR1, a Cadillac CTSV, as well as a Chrysler 300. Champ would end up pleading guilty to leading a cocaine and heroin trafficking network. About a year after his takedown in July of 2014, a judge would go on to sentence him to about 22 years, that would end up being reduced to 19, though he would never reveal the source of his supply in Mexico. Now, I'm not quite sure if Champ was the one that would go on to connect Ballhead, but what I do know is with the arrest of Champ, it was a void on Birmingham's west side. And seeing that void, Rolando Williamson would turn his hustle up and be bigger than Champ ever was. And this was show in 2009 when Ballhead, who had already been doing his thing with the cartel, would get an invitation to solidify the relationship with a motorcycle trip across the border. Now, not quite sure if Williamson considered the trip, but he would end up declining after one of his associates, who was also Mexican, would go on to warn him that he might be kidnapped, beaten, and held for a $100,000 ransom. His associate would go on to explain his own situation that he had with the golf cartel, where he would end up being kidnapped and his father would be forced to sell the family home just to secure his release on the $20,000 ransom. Saying further that Ballhead, being a U.S. drug trafficker, was worth even more. That's why they would ask for $100,000. Taking heed to the warning, he would stay at home at Alabama, but he would continue to pump keys for a guy named Mimi, who was his plug out of Monterey, Mexico. That would continue for a few months, but what Ballhead didn't know was back in Alabama where he was safe at, one of his drug carriers would go on to turn on him and he would begin to allow investigators to listen in on their drug deals. And in the summer of 2019, while he would be planning a trip to Atlanta, the FBI's North Alabama Safe Streets Task Force would begin to build a case against him. So while he was allegedly on a trip to Atlanta to pick up another load, the FBI would go on to arrest him and search two of his properties where they would go on to find marijuana, 135 grams of heroin, as well as 150 grams of fentanyl that they would describe as 75,000 potential lethal doses of the top drug that's killing Americans. Now, I'm not quite sure what his plea options was, but he would end up taking the government to trial where he would end up being sentenced to life plus 10 years on top of levying him with a litany of fines for running the multi-million dollar drug trafficking organization. It was said when they took Champ off the streets, it was a void. But when they took Ballhead off the streets, it was a hole. 
Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box, y'all flooded. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what gangsters we miss, what we got wrong. You know you got to follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We will be back with some more real trill spill shit in a minute. This shit got popular. Mob gang.